gripping story of Peyton Place. Starring Dorothy Malone as Constance McKenzie, Ed Nelson as Michael Rossi, Ryan O'Neill as Rodney Harrington, Barbara Parkins as Betty Anderson, Tim O'Connor as Elliot Carson, Christopher Connolly as Norman Harrington, Patricia Morrow as Rita Harrington, James Douglas as Stephen Cord. Tonight, Lee Weber seized the opportunity to prove to Martin Payton that his loyalty is absolute. Lee came upon a seemingly harassed, cornered Payton, forced the old man to confess a fear of Leslie Harrington, and then demanded the chance to destroy that fear. What Lee failed to observe in Payton's weakness was the fact that the old man was manipulating him, carefully exploiting Lee's desperate need to prove himself. Sorry to interrupt, Leslie. Well, I'm uh, knee deep in paperwork, Stephen. Could you make it some other time? I find it odd that you wanted to stand bail for my plan. Well, I uh, didn't want to, but you did. When you have children, Stephen, you'll find yourself involved in situations that go counter to your desires and your better judgment. Care for a warmer upper? Thanks. Look, uh, Norman convinced me that if Eddie didn't get bail, Rita would suffer. It's as simple as that. Personally, I'd much rather have put up the money for some well-deserving hobo. What if Eddie jumps bail? Why should you say that? You're his lawyer. It's a possibility. If you made it clear to him that Rita's marriage isn't going to lie in his pockets, why should he want to stick around and risk having to stand trial? Because he's too soft. Eddie wouldn't be able to cope with being a fugitive. That's very perceptive. You've gotten to know him pretty well. I've met his type a hundred times before, Stephen, and so have you. Now, are you through grilling me? I have a big meeting in about an hour. Peyton and Kennerly are coming over. Tonight? Tonight. Uh, so, if you'll excuse me. Well, I'm afraid I'm not leaving. Not yet, anyway. What's happening? You'll be informed. What's the meeting about? I'm sure you'll get a memo. Is it about Eddie? Yes. Martin Payton and Bill Kennerly are coming over here, marching their way through the snow so they can sit down and talk about a bartender at Ada Jack's tavern. It is about Eddie, isn't it? You're making a fool of yourself, Stephen. You put up the bail for him, Martin Payton wanted to. Yes, the subject of your little meeting tonight is Eddie Jack's. You know, I always love our conversations, Leslie. They leave so much unsaid. something I'd like to say to you. Relax, it's already been said. Quote, the occupants of this boarding house do not care to live under the same roof with a man who has been accused of murder, unquote. But they weren't talking for me. Oh, I know, I didn't give you a big reception when you first came to town. But I don't go along with these people that want you to pack up and get out of here. In fact, I think it's a darn shame. Well, thanks a lot, Eva. I don't understand how anyone living in this broken down boarding house can become an aristocrat all of a sudden. Well, you mean that uh, some night, if you were standing out there on the steps, you wouldn't be a little bit nervous if I came up behind you? Oh, <laughs> that sounds like something our old buddy downstairs, Hilda Kramer, might have thought of. Well, I'd say that that was an even money bet. You're being pretty calm about this. Oh, I've rolled with a lot of punches, you know.
this punch was really a low blow. Uh, you won't get any argument out of me. Here, I want you to look at this. Here, take a look at these. A lot of junk. Good luck charms I picked up along the way. They kept me believing that I could beat the odds. Well, I just lost the faith. With everybody poking their fingers in my face and telling me that I killed somebody, you know, and then getting a well-placed boot out of here, I guess maybe that's what it took to get the blinders off and uh, help me take a look at the world the way it really is. You know? Do you think you picked the right time to start looking? Well, that's the point of the whole thing, Eli. It doesn't make any difference what you pick. All that really counts is what number comes up. Now. Have you got everything? Yeah. Everything that I need. Take care. Devil, have you been anyway? I haven't worried sick. I'm sorry. You said you'd be gone for about half an hour. Why didn't you call? I lost track of the time. What happened anyway? Well, I walked to the square, tried to take in a movie. You, you went to the movies? Well, I was feeling a little bit low. I thought maybe a movie might help, but it didn't. Couldn't sit still more than a few minutes. So I went back to the cemetery. Why? I don't know. I just started walking and was thinking of something entirely different, and then I found myself there, on the grounds. And then? Stephen was there, and we talked. About Adrian? Yes. I don't know, Elliot. I just can't get her out of my mind. But honey, you hardly knew the woman. I know. She had so little in life. And in death. Listen, honey, let it go. She had her own life, and it was her own life, you know. I know, I'm being foolish. No, you're not. You're just being a little bit more upset and concerned with other people's misfortunes, that's all. Seems like it runs in the family. Dad called a few minutes ago. Seems like he's kind of upset, too. What's wrong? No, nothing at all. He's got a few things in his mind, that's no. all. I thought I might drop over there in a while, but I can always put that off. No, no, go ahead. I'll be all right. You sure? Yes, really. All right, then. I'll drop over for about an hour. Huh? Unless, of course, I decide to drop into the cinema. See you later, sweetheart. Night, sir. to see a loan for a minute. What's the bag for? At the moment, it's my home. And where's home tomorrow? I don't know. You bum. You no good, rotten bum. Well, I, I think maybe you got the wrong idea. I want to know what I'm going to tell your daughter when she asks why you jumped there, why you didn't stay around and deny you had anything to do with that woman's death. You don't have to tell her anything. That's right. She'll know everything the minute they put out a warrant for your arrest. And if it's sent her to the hospital, just seeing you hauled in, what do you think it's going to do to her when you don't stay around for your own hearing? You might just as well give her a signed confession. Ada, I'm dizzy, but I did not kill Adrian Van Leiden. I don't care if you did or not. You could kill Rita if you don't stay here and deny it in court. I'm not running away from anything. I've got the bag because my good neighbors across the way don't care for my company anymore. And I came in the back door because I thought maybe some of the cash customers out front might feel the same way. 
Now, I can take that cold shoulder, and I can take anything that the district attorney throws against me. But I'm not going to stand here and take any more about how I don't care about Rita, even though you have every reason to think that way. <sighs> now, excuse me. I'm just plain tired. I'll let you know when I find a room. Eddie. Rita's room is empty. You can use it until after the hearing. <laughs> Don't have to quit out front. A 24 hour watch? I've got to hold my baby's world together. I'm not sure I can make it by myself this time. Oh, what's she gonna think if I move back into the house? She might think a little more of me than she does right now. I, I did something stupid. I told her what you got arrested for. Hated you for so long. I, I just wanted to hurt you the way you've hurt me. When Rita started to care for you, I wanted to prove that you weren't worth caring for. You weren't worth loving. So I told her. I'm just as much to blame for the way she is right now as you are. I'm all right. You're lonely, like me. I wasted my best years knocking around with a beat-up suitcase. And you spent yours standing behind a bar listening to other people's problems. Weren't there times when you wanted somebody to listen to yours? It's just a place to sleep, Eddie. It's a deal. And don't you worry anymore about the kid's future. I'll take care of that. With what, a two-dollar ticket at the racetrack? Keep the light on.